Yes, perfect. Okay, great. So I'll talk about the 19th century. Um, so their text circulated promiscuously among newspapers as editors freely reprinted materials for from other venues. Can we identify reprinting practices in the German immigrant newspapers, even though publication locations were far apart? So in my PhD project, I used 60 German language newspapers from 17 states in the United States, published between 1830 and 1914 to examine reprinting practices. I used PASM software to curate the data set of German language newspapers from Chronicling America into a data set that only contains reprinted texts. As it turns out, the immigrant newspapers shared a huge amount of information, even though publication locations were far apart. So due to the abundance and diversity of reprinted texts, I additionally apply machine learning techniques to classify texts into genres such as, for instance, hard news, ads, poems, or lists. This approach has theoretical and pragmatic reasons. First of all, computationally classifying texts seeks to better understand the nature and the role of genres, their sim similarities and anomalies, and how they relate to migrant groups that differ in sex, gender, age, or class. Second, the objective is to create a digital archive of genre classified reprint the text and make it available for further research in the field. So one objective of the classification process is to find above all reprinted texts that provide insight into collective experiences of women, as well as gender roles, stereotypes, and sexism. Do we expect genres to favor the representation of, for instance, specific gender? As you can see on the slide, according to Wertitz, women appear more often in ads than men, using all reprint clusters. Additionally, a selection here of some of the complements to the nouns provides the first representation of men and women within this uh, genre. While uh, Frau is a woman is preceded by modifiers such as feeble, tender, strange, or dying, as well as male possessive pronouns, men is accompanied by adjectives such as healthy, wise, honest, or happy. So zooming into some of the reprint clusters reveals that these ads are about patent medicines marketed without regard to sex. However, even though these products target both sexes, women are dominant in these ads because they are used as marketing strategies. Often with the underlying plot structure, woman A was suffering from B, subsequently she took medicine C, now she feels reborn, you need to, product, uh, to buy product C or visit Dr. D. So then these narratives usually end with listing the name, price, and seller of the product, thereby featuring men as the ones to cure male and female suffering. So even though most of the ads refer to products targeting both men and women, there are also quite a number of reprinted ads of products for women, specifically pain relief medicine for menstrual cramps. Um, so one of the most frequently reprinted uh, texts marketed to women to cure female weakness refers to Dr. Pierce's favorite prescription. The product was a tonic to quiet nervous irritation and strengthen the nervous system. Favorite prescription can be seen as a prime example of what we now call viral marketing because the creative nature of viral marketing enables an un endless amount of potential forms. So there's not one single story about the product, but many different textual and visual representations in different represent bien l'expérience féminine. Reprinted ads became front page material. They differed in headlines and with regard to the information about the female body, related symptoms and causes for female weakness, but also in terms of plot structure and accompanying images. As you can see on the, on the left side, for instance, some reprinted ads, such as for instance, this one is called Ein Frauenantlitz, uh, begins with a romantic depiction of women whose age-related transformations are metaphorically imagined as, natural, as the natural fading of flowers. While the image on the left depicts a young woman holding a flower in her hand, another ad, on the, as you can see on the right, which had a lot longer circulation period and wider dissemination, shows textually and visually a more sinister depiction of the female condition. So the woman on the right side is compared to the woman on the left side seems to be trapped. 
So this ad directly with uh, starts with a narrative about a woman's cry for help whose savior can only be a man, Dr. Pierce. So the favorite prescription example is a story about the misrepresentation and abuse of the female body in the 19th century. And it is a missing data set because so far historians narratives have prioritized representation of Pierce, his success and of the individual projects, uh, product. These observations about patriarchal biases, misrepresentations of the female body, the racial man and the imaginative woman lead me to further investigate the representation of women in other genres, as well as their relation to one another. Thank you so much.